I'll take this opportunity of introducing our next guest speaker, Vismit Rakhecha. Vismit is an information security enthusiast. He always tries to keep himself with up-to-date knowledge about various information security domains. His objective is to achieve pinnacle in the arcane of information assurance by possessing wide knowledge base with strong educational background, which can fulfill his personal and organization's objectives. His specialities include application security, penetration testing, ethical hacking, security vulnerability assessments. He is a person with deep passion to research and understand new security threat and vulnerabilities. He has delivered talks, lectures, and training on various information security domains at open security com communities and educational institutions. I welcome you, Vishnu. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. So today my topic is IoT Anubruth. So who am I? My name is Vishnu Sudhir Rakhecha, aka Drug. I am SSCP, CHFI, CCI Security. Currently working as Senior Security Analyst at Avalon Health International. I am Chapter Leader of Samdavad, the Bug Hunter. So quickly going through disclaimer, I don't own any of the images I used in the slides. I simply googled it. Whatever I am demonstrating is for educational purpose only. Research was conducted by me and does not reflect the vision of Avalon Health. What is IoT basically? Uh, if we are going to like wiki definition, the IoT is a system of interrelated computing devices, mechanical and physical machines, objects and objects, animals or people that are provided with a unique identifiers and the ability to transfer data over a network without requiring human to human or human to computer interaction. Okay. In the simple way IoT is basically as uh, it's basically can be a gadget, okay, with some CPUs, RAM, chips, and protocol device, okay. It's not like your uh, typical laptop or a system with a keyboard or with a mouse pad, okay. Depend on the device, okay, what you are using, okay, it can be customized. Like, okay, if I'm using a smartwatch, so it's just having a display panel, okay, and a touch sensor. Okay, if I'm using a smart cam, so it's just having a cam over there, a recording device, as in the protocol or a Wi-Fi card in that. Okay, so basically that is um, IoT. Uh, if I'm talking about like cooking, uh, when we say IoT, it's really cool thing right now. Everyone is just running towards IoT or IoT security or IoT bank testing or development of some IoT devices, robotics. Okay, so basically IoT is a combination of four or five things. Okay, that is basically your hardware, your web and mobile application, cloud, internet, and a communication. Okay, so basically that whole bunch makes the IoT. Obviously, like, okay, if I uh, just take an example of a smartwatch, okay, so it's basically you are having the hardware, the band you are wearing, okay, a uh, mobile application from which you are just syncing up with your phone and your watch, okay. Cloud, we are not having cloud in a smart band, but if you are talking about a smart cam or then we are having a cloud, so we can just uh, post your videos or a photo over there. Internet, obviously, you require an internet connection or some VLE connection to make a communication with, with your device and with your mobile application. So, so there are lots of internet of device right now present in the market. You are having a smart coffee maker, smart band, smart guns, scams, locks. Okay, there are thousands of things available. Okay, with the rank, uh, sorry, with the tag name of a smart. Okay, but uh, what I researched in few uh, past years. Okay, and I have few friends in IoT security or a VAPT also, but they are not such a smart thing. Just they, they are simply making your work easy or just giving you some cool gadgets so you just look that's all. Uh, even uh, we are having a pacemaker, I think uh, if you remember or not in that phone, okay, our guys showed like okay how you can hack a pacemaker. It was damn easy that if you hack some pacemaker, you can give him a shock that can uh, give him or her to a that. Okay, so there are lots of devices, even a coffee maker. I think uh, everyone uh, there, there was a picture viral, I think, last year with a ransom thing, like, okay, if you are using thousands of smart devices in your home, like, okay, a coffee maker or a vacuum cleaner or 
or you can say a smart camera for that tracking devices okay so it's basically uh, one can easily hack that thing out and just start malfunctioning it okay one can uh, demand a ransom for that so all the IoT things are common you know are having a common things like CPUs you can have a calm camera over there okay but what I found out like okay there are lots of issues like there is no authentication okay uh, in most of the IoT devices, there is no security, there is no encryption, okay. Uh, in most of the uh, IoT devices, the API, you can find some secret keys, some username and a password in their APIs, okay. And you can find some backup files, the cloud communication is not encrypted. So, there are lots of issues going on with the IoT devices. These are some current news, okay. Uh, what I think is like Australian security camera hack is streamed on the Russian based website. Um, Microsoft catches Russians, said hackers using IoT devices to breach the network. Uh, drones, vibrators, kids, toys, like okay, uh, uh, I think I remember, like okay, uh, I think few months back there is a child monitoring cam okay it is vulnerable to like okay someone can hack into it okay and they can just uh, record whatever things are going into your child room okay or what they are doing okay vibrators okay sex toys there are lots of things okay as i already tell you the companies make it smart but they are damn lazy to put some security things into that okay so uh, how to start? Sorry. How to start to penetrate a IoT device? So we will go with some basic tactics that helps you to penetrate IoT devices. Like it's a hot topic right now. So this scope of text testing. So as I already told you, like okay, IoT is a bunch of five or six, sorry, four or five things. So the first thing is your firmware. Everyone knows okay, like okay, what is a firmware? It's basically, that helps you to. Uh, it's basically a you can say a software okay for your hardware devices that makes uh, user to communicate with the device. Hardware okay, just like an example of bank or again the bank that's your hardware. The software okay, the cloud environment as I already told you. Suppose you are using some cam or something like that, so it requires a cloud and communication or uh, if i am using a band bluetooth band so it's quite a BLE. okay if i am required some uh, mobile cam i am using so it's mostly using cd wireless communication coir okay so basically this is the thing so firmware in hardware we are uh, we will mostly chat like jpegs ur serial ports memory chips etc and software mobile and web okay so cloud it can be anything like okay might be they are having their own cloud or something like that so just so basically what are the current security problems we are facing okay and uh, if i'm talking about a firmware or a hardware or a web or a mobile or a cloud so let's start with the firmware okay and firmware like most of the thing most of the times like the encryption is not there uh, the validation is missing below. I can update a firmware. Okay, uh, I just I just downloaded the firmware. I just customized according to me, and I can easily upload. So there is no validation. There is hard code sensitive information is also available. Okay, like you can get sometimes a username and a password or some keys or a cloud default username and a password. There are lots of sensitive information is also present. Like okay, but I few months back I stripped the cam like okay a Chinese bar cam so I get username and a password hard coded username and a password okay in that um, in hardware like most of the open debugging codes that is known as UART is mostly open and like okay if you buy some Chinese products like okay cam or uh, some robots or some uh, you can say child toys or something like that so in most of the times like all the things like okay uh, UR port or JTAG ports and everything is printed on board so you don't have to do so you don't have to go much around that so everything is readily available in your plate so you have to just export that 
okay the, they are having inter, uh, insecure stories like okay most of the time like what i notice like okay as i already told you like okay username and password some key some cloud or uh, some sensitive information are already stored in the hardware okay, without any encryption so when we are talking about the web application so obviously like the same thing what we are doing um can have a jack sql injection like okay uh, in most of the web application authentication bypass is possible uh, xss is common csrf is there sql injection is there so you can check out these things in mobile application again the same thing like xss sql injection is damn common over there insecure apis like okay what api calling is damn insecure um, authentication is damn uh, missing in most of the mobile application what i tested till react so these are few uh, problems are uh, right now we are facing in iot security or if you are into bug hunting like i think um, there are a few programs available on hacker one okay so you can test their iot you can find a bug in their iot programs or something like that so you can follow the same methodology what we are testing today uh, so what will be the iot uh, time testing methodology so the first is evolution device recon okay tearing and without tearing okay we will discuss on that mobile cloud and web apis firmware reverse engineering network or communication you can see okay non-invention hardware attacks videos okay so let's get into it so the one first thing okay what we are testing is known as uh, we will start with without tearing down okay so if you are having a device like if i'm having my iphone your android phone your uh, routers your band anything okay so most of the times you can see the fcc okay that is basically uh you will get an fcc the component version hardware version software versions um software system used you will get lack of information over here like okay all the juicy information you can find on FCIDD, sorry, FCC, and uh, you can get a UR, JTAG, SP, uh, SPI, okay, the, in, uh, what you can say, the internal circuit board, everything is present on that. I think uh, if you notice, you will get something like that in, if you check your back of your, whatever product you are using, or if there is some handbook or instruction guide, you will get back things in that. In Apple, I think in general, um in general there is some information like that so it will shows you the fci so how to check that so speak a look there is a damn good it's visible right yeah okay that's right so there is a perhaps there is a yes, website known as fccid.io okay so that's simple just take any fcc id we will take our own so our FCC ID is okay. Now this time is good today. So we will take this um H V four.
frequency range over here you, you can get the user manual over here if you want you can check the internal photos just click over here so if we are checking for some hardware issues like okay debugging port UART port JTAG port so we can directly get information lots of information from here Diagrams and everything on FCCID.io. I will share the link with you. At CPU information, you will get memories, you will get physical ports, whether they are using some ETH, USB, Ethernet, USB, circuit connection, UART or JTAG diagrams, architecture, if they are using some PLE, radio whatever frequency rank, uh, range you will get uh, you will get a wealth of information over there so that is the first step you can start with the record uh, if we tear it down like okay so just how you will tear it down obviously you just require some screwdrivers and just open it okay and just check out like okay like as i already told you like if i'm going for some chinese devices okay in most of the chinese devices okay um the other thing is printed on board like you will get everything over there okay like uh, jtag yeah this is the thing what i want to show you if you check out like, everything is printed on the board okay so it's damn easy to find out like okay and uh, if it's not printed on the board okay so you have to check it manually okay it's damn easy you can even check on fcc id like okay you can use some google docs to find out like okay what are the bugs present or so what is the in, uh, internal or external structure of that so what you will get in tearing down you will get a usb and the serial port you can look up it's damn easy you can easily look up to that okay uh then you can check for urt urt is music uh, basically you will easily find some like three or four pins okay mostly it might be a spike pin or an onboard phones also so you can find it out it's damn easy i will show you the better way to find it out uh jtag you can easily find it out jtag you will get uh it's mostly like in the set of 6, 12, 13, 20 pins. Um, SPI, SPI is mostly used, uh, it's basically a flash chip, okay. So, you can check it out. So, okay, so these are the things. That's fine, we will cover uh, you are Okay, now what is firmware? As I already discussed, like okay, firmware is mostly used uh, to have, uh, it's basically uh, some softwares, okay, that present on your device that is responsible for running the ARP devices. It's just like basically uh, our operating system what we that helps you to interact with the user. Okay, so uh, we can obtain a firmware okay there are few other methods also so i will share each and every method with you 
So the very first thing, um, you can use some kind of website. If suppose I'm using a kind of fast track, so I can easily get a firmware on a fast track website. Okay. Uh, you can use some uh, like okay, if I'm saying like fast track. So there are lots of fast track support groups, forms are available. You can ask over there. You can email to the vendors website. Okay, they will give you. You can download from some FTP uh, server. There are lots of FTP servers available where you can download a firmware. You can Google it. You can easily get that. Okay, and you can dump the firmware from the device. Okay. And how you will do that, I will show you definitely. So this is, I think, of TP link. You can in form update. I think you can easily dump a firmware from there. So what what we will look in the firmware? As I already uh, tell you, like okay, you will get sensitive information about devices. Uh, hard code SSIDs will be there. Hard code as password you will get. API tokens and some endpoints. Um, you will get some configuration files if you are lucky. Source code is there. Uh, I found um, when I tested few IoT devices from, uh, so I get lots of uh, private keys over there. Uh, hard coded. If you check out source code, so there are uh, like okay, most of the developers uh, don't get me wrong, but uh, what I tested in RP, like okay, they are damn lazy. So. I found lots of hard coded um, username and a password in the command things. So you can check out uh, this thing. So how you will do that? So for firmware analysis, okay, uh, you can use hack stuff. Okay, that is a good feature available in Linux. Okay, and you can use your dash G and your firmware name. Okay, what I personally like is Winwalk. Okay, Winwalk is used mostly for extraction. Okay, and if you want to go for some automation, so there is Form Walker is there and Fact is there. Okay, damn good tools. So, but I personally suggest you to use if you are using. So I mostly suggest you to use Binwalk. Okay, it's damn good tool. Like you have to just like Binwalk dash e and just give your form bin name. So it will extract most of the things over there. Now let, let's talk about our hardware part, the UI part. As I already told you, like okay, you can easily get, uh, you can easily identify a UART pins, okay, uh, in, on your board. So mostly if it's printed and if it's not printed, so you will see in group like four or a three. So it's onboarded. I recently drew down. Uh, I showed in one of the meet like uh, TP-Link router. Uh, so how you can exploit a TP-Link router with the UART board. So it's basically that big. So you can easily identify by like uh, by like okay, it's a group of three or a group of four. Uh, so basically, uh, the four pins represent VCC, that is GND, DX, and RX. VCC is voltage, GND is your ground, DX is for transmit, and RX is for receive. Basically, UART is um, you can say it's basically universal, asynchronous receiver and a transmitter. Okay, so, uh, as a synchronous works on time clock, so it's the clock rate on. So UART is mostly worked on baud rate. Okay, you can set a baud rate on which is basically do a communication. Like okay, if I set a baud rate of nine nine thousand six hundred, so all my communication will be done on nine thousand six hundred baud rate. So you can define like that, like okay, which baud rate you want to use. Now, how to identify like okay, which is my VCC port, GND port, and a DX port if it's not written on the board. So it's uh, there are two or three methods for that. Okay, you can use multimeter for that. Okay, uh, just to, uh, find out the GND pin. It's damn easy. GND like okay, just uh, uh, touch your uh, multimeter probe over GND and on some metallic device. If you get a beep, that means it's GND. And uh, just keep your one pin on the GND and other on DX. Okay, and uh, just turn on your device because uh, once you turn on your device, the so boot process is going on, and you will just uh, transmit lots of data over there. So you can easily find out that thing. Okay, but actually, I uh, what I found personally like it's damn hard to find out uh, the pins via multimeter. So there is a damn good tool known as logical. 
I will share again a link with you guys. So it's damn easy. You can find with the logic that okay, which pins you have to just shuffle the pins and it will give you lots of information. So and one more thing, I forgot to tell you. Uh, you require a damn good tool. Okay, um, mostly I prefer to use is USB TTL. That is used to connect your whatever hardware you are testing to your system. Okay, it's a simple device with uh, just like your USB, and uh, uh, on the other side, it's having a pins like GND, VCC, TX, RX. You can directly connect over there. So it will basically help you to communicate with your system and your whatever uh, device you are using for testing, like it might be a router. Or or when we are testing is mostly used to dump a firmware or to write a new firmware in that. Okay, it provides direct access to your RAM, flash, okay, so it's damn easy if you are writing or if you are just uh, uploading your own crafted or vulnerable firmware, okay. So you, as, you, as I already told you, like you can find in a bunch of like 6 or a 12, 13, 18 or a 20 so it's basically in the pair you can easily find out uh, it's basically my TP link router so you can see like okay these are my GND pins and these are my JTEC pins so it's easily uh, you can easily find it out it's not that much difficult okay now, now let's talk about identifying UFOs in your web consoles okay so what uh, things you required when you are identifying um, bugs in your back console. So you just require mostly I prefer it. Okay, I'm just using Bob Suit for that. Okay, or there are uh, thousands of other tools available. You can use some of the scanners. Okay, um, Arachini or Equinity, but obviously you will not get the perfect things in that. So I prefer for what Zap or uh, Bob Suit you can use. Okay, that is the best thing. Uh, you can uh, mostly uh, like okay. What I noticed like okay, XSS is damn easy. SQL injection, authentication bypass, IDOR. Okay, so check the permission level of the uh, like okay. Just wait a few users in that like uh, I'm all, I worked uh, uh, for um, software solution as a product security head over there. So. Um, you can have like that, okay, you can create two accounts like, okay, one with the admin rights and one with the normal privileges and just try to uh, cross verify it, okay, just try to like, okay, give set up the permissions or just, so in most of the times like, okay, it will bypass that particular thing. So as a web console, if, uh, like simple things, what mostly we are trying to find out in our uh, when we are doing a BAPT or a bug hunting, so same things we are finding over here. Uh, in mobile application, again, um, there are two tools to be used, like mostly what I prefer is again a work suit and uh, Move SF is, uh, that is mostly used for static analysis, it's again a damn good tool, you, you can use that, okay, uh, you can start with uh, basically checking out the source code of a application, okay, you can use uh, what is the tool name? GDGUI for that, okay, and extract everything and check out like okay manually, like okay, you can find some hard coded uh, passwords or keys or a tokens, okay. You can um, few issues will be like hard coded firmwares, URL, like okay, uh, API call, like okay, if they are having uh, encryption key, most of the time you can find it out, okay. Um, username, password, hard coded username and a password. It's mostly like admin, admin, and uh, it's really shocking. I, uh, as I already told you, like okay, I tested a Chinese webcam few months back. I presented that in some meetup. Uh, so when uh, making a communication with the cloud, okay, so it's having like okay, username, admin, and there is no password. It's like a blank password you can send. So it's really a shocking, like okay. Uh, now take, uh, talk about radio, okay, uh, so uh, if you check out on internet like uh, in past two or three months, there are lots of guys, they are just, uh, sorry if 
someone is there, they are just promoting like okay, video hacking. And if you just went to the post, so they simply uh, showed you like okay, you can hear any radio channel on your system. Okay, so they are not going that deep when we are talking about the VAPT part or the communication. Okay, so what you can do with the radio is like okay, you can. Um, make a jamming attack over there, modifying and replay attack, sniffing the radio package. Okay, there, there is a damn good tool known as SBR. Okay, you can easily find on our Amazon. Okay, and uh, it's basically helps you to retrieve like, okay, what uh, sniffing basically, what rate on uh, what particular uh, radio frequency, okay, the things are going on. So you can easily sniff that out, okay. Uh, there are lots of things you can do, like okay, you can check out our uh, aeroplanes. What we are coming, okay. Uh, for what the name was, it is uh, the aeroplane. Com it's not this really communication. Uh, you can check, like okay, which uh, aeroplane is visiting right now. Okay, uh, what aeroplane takes off? You can take out search. Okay, um, uh, I recently tried to. Do that. Uh, your key drops. Okay, if you are having a car, obviously the remote you are locking with your remote. Okay, it's working on RF. So if you know the frequency, okay, so I can easily open that particular car. Like okay, um, I checked out. Like okay, um, in most of the, uh, I think last year in Nalpon, someone showed like okay a car hacking. And it was really a cool thing. Like okay, um, car hacking and everything. So. Um, according to my thing, if I am just to able to bypass your door, like okay, with the RF, so I can get access to your car. So I don't have to do lots of things like okay, to find out some pins and to exploit that thing. It's very easy. I just try to check out your frequency. I just open the gate and I am. Now talk about the really like Bluetooth low energy on which like most of your smart things for your band, your everything. So but mostly uh, uh, yeah I, I think in one of my meet I showed like okay how I can exploit a smart band. I tried to exploit my uh, fast track smart band. Okay. So it's damn easy like okay. Bluetooth uh, is basic see the issue is uh, if I'm talking about with the IoT like okay uh, we can't have a keyboard for some security of this for some passcode okay on your uh, the little smartwatch or a bank okay and we can't have the same thing with your cams okay or if I'm using a Amazon dot okay or a Google home or a Google mini so we can't have a, uh, a small keyboard or something like to uh, use some passcodes or some security codes or something like that so that is the main reason like okay you can exploit such things so for how BLE works okay the BLE is working on like service and the characteristics like okay uh, there is a service like um, the uh, show time okay then there will be a characteristics okay you have to show at uh, minutes seconds okay you can put alarm then alarm the characteristic will be okay what characteristic will be, it will be used like okay time and everything so you can have a bunch like that like okay uh, the characteristics the service and the characteristic like okay service and what is the characteristic of that service so um, I try to change like okay my time okay some colors okay uh, there are a uh, few devices you can use for BLE Ubuntu uh, it's damn costly okay damn 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 costly and uh, there is one good tool um, CSR Okay, Bluetooth version 4.0. You can easily get on Amazon or on a local shop also. It's damn cheap for like okay, you can easily get in I think 200 bucks. And uh, the tool mostly used for uh, BLE exploitation or a Bluetooth exploitation. Okay, uh, there's a damn good tool present in Kali known as Get Tool. Okay. And uh, if you are not having a Kali or if you are not used to it, if you are having an Android device, there is an option available in developer's mode known as HCI Dump. So it's damn easy, you just uh, connect your 
watch with your phone, start your SCI term and start communication. So you will get all the details over there. Like, okay, how it is communicating, how uh, things are going on. And before that, you can start with, there is a damn good tool known as SCI tool, again, presented in Kali. So it will give you everything like, okay, what is the service and characteristics available. Now talks about uh, now with, um, the next part, okay, we tested like the BLE, the CV. CV uh, is mostly used to uh, monitor the things, monitor uh, like, okay, you can use CV. Uh, it's basically a low wireless uh, protocol, okay. And uh, what you can perform in ZB. ZB is uh, mostly used, I think, in your, uh, I noticed in some of your smart devices for industrial controls, your water motors or smart water motors or smart temperature controls, they are using ZB. So in ZB, uh, you can use a sniffing for that. MITM is possible in ZB. Uh, so there are two tools if you want to exploit CV, um, the hardware is RZ, RZ Laven, okay, uh, it's, you can easily get in local market, okay, or even in your Amazon or like that, okay, and there is a damn good framework known as Killer B, so you can use that thing also, and it's really a nice tool, you can, it will help you to exploit that particular thing. So. Uh, these are the attacker tools mostly what I am using, okay, so I want to share with you, okay, for packet inspection I am using Wireshark, okay, sorry, uh, for proxy I am using Bugsuit, you can use OAPZAP also, for Bluetooth, Blue Hydra is there, GAT Tracker is there, SCI tool is there, BTLE Juice is there, Wireshark, Okay, SDR as I already told you, <coughs> software defined radio is basically, um, it's basically um, like our older radios they are having big or something like that, so it's just like your USB drive, uh, you can just plug it in your system and uh, you can use some softwares and SDR softwares is available at RTL, SDR, okay, and uh, you can, it will function just like your radio, okay, and well, as you know, we all are into like cracking or hacking or a security field. So we can just um, try to exploit more or explore more things, okay, that are running on the radio packets. For mobile reverse engineering, APK tool is there, JEDX is there, uh, software disassembler, Gidra. I prefer to use Gidra for that. IDA is there, Binary Ninja, there are thousands of tools. Oh, only DVG is there. Uh, Fogger reversing bin walk, that is the best tool, okay, you can use any extraction tool as I already told you, fat is there, form vapor is there, uh, for fuzzing, uh, chemo is good tool, flash roam is there, okay, and uh, minicom is used like, okay, uh, uh, for your UART, okay, if I am testing some UART port or if I am uh, exporting a UART port, so we are using minicom for that, okay. And uh, for hardware, you require obviously screwdriver, multimeter, soldering irons. Okay, uh, as my suggestion, if you want to explore more into IoT, okay, so uh, start learn how to shoulder, how to deshoulder the chips and everything. You can buy some. Uh, there's a damn good uh, vulnerable hardware available of ATP. You can buy that, or you can uh, even for. Uh, I have to, they are having an exploit kit, so you can buy that, but, uh, or if you want to so buy some cheaper one, so you can just take one thing, like, okay, if you want to exploit a UART, just take one thing, buy some cheaper hardware, and you can exploit that, okay, so don't go for, it's my suggestion, don't go for a whole package, like, okay, you can just buy a single, single product, and you can test it out. Interface tools, USB to URD, flash dumper is there. Uh, for RF, uh, Ubertooth, okay, that is again damn costly tools. Okay, for software, RTL, SDR, as I already told you. Hack RF is damn good tool, it's like a bi directional. 
in SD, uh, RTL SDR, you can only receive the things. Okay, but in hack RF, blade RF, it's a bi directional. You can even transmit and you can receive it. But again, they are done costly. For ZB, double C two five three one sneaker is damn cheaper. You can easily buy from your local shop also. <coughs> Sorry, or from Amazon or Flipkart store. Okay, you will get in under I think four hundred bucks. So these are some reference ATP, IoT Pen Testing Cookbook, okay, IoTPentest.com, IoTPentestGuide.com, and special thanks to Rikya Su, Mr. Ardi, Vira Babu, is like God to me. Uh, that's all from my side. If you're having any questions later on, if you want more things, you can ask me on any of these things like Facebook, Gmail. I think we have some technical issue, but uh, thank you, Vismith. This is very interesting. And uh, thank you for sharing all the tools. And thank you for presenting. Yes, I think it was really wonderful approach. Uh, you know, how to uh, keep your uh, IoT devices at oh, least. Uh, a lot. Hey, Vismith. Yes, we got a lot of good feedback on the yeah. chat. Yeah. Uh, I, Vismit? Thanks a lot. Yeah, well, I'm just checking out that only. Okay. Yep, yeah, Nihal, audible? Yes, yes we are audible. Okay, cool. So, yeah, uh, we found like um, policies like barely secured, IoT devices are more of a threat to us. Yep, totally agree on that. Not uh, Patil, I think depends on whether vendor on whatever vendor we got i think it's not depend on the vendor because uh, i think uh, we all knows like if we even go with the top notch uh, vendors like uh, i can't take name over here so yeah but still even they are having flaws in them so yeah it's not totally depend on vendors it's totally depend on the developers and uh, the hot fix they are doing is there any certification for IoT device security standards? No, there is not a specific certification for IoT device, but yep. Uh, right now I'm going for a ham radio that is for like frequencies and all. Yep. So you can go for that. Very interesting. Um, Thanks a lot, yeah. Paul. I think uh, I had one question for you uh, from my side. Say, mm -hmm. suppose an organization is looking to procure IoT device. Uh, to ease their workflow and maybe also want to deploy for uh, their physical locations or deploy, you know, on the field. So what guidelines uh, you would like to give them to follow? How they, uh, you know, check how, what in the procurement process they should be looking at to validate the IoT device uh, before they deploy on the field? Like, because you mentioned so many ways that there are so many loopholes. So is there any uh, like a directory or a listing on the web where hackers would have already tested given IoT devices and give their reviews, go or bad, what would be, you know, the security threat they would be looking at if they buy something? Uh, yep, I think there is a damn good checklist already available uh, from OAPS. Mm -hmm. And if you want more, yeah, definitely I will share with my own. Choice. Yes, yeah, yeah, because we have organizations and uh, founders who are innovating a lot and they would be interested to look at, uh, you know, hey, you know, these are so many scary things about IoT, but they also present you a very good opportunity to improvise and transform your business. So they just want to see that, you know, what are the certified uh, devices? So at least something that people have already found that uh, they don't have that well-known bugs or, you know, already they got fixed if they had bugs any. Surely, definitely I will share the list with you as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah sure. And we'll also invite you in uh, future IoT dedicated uh, workshops and webinars where you can uh, maybe take part and maybe, you know, rip apart uh, any physical uh, real device and, you know, give an introduction or, you know, let the attendees and the workshop, uh, you know, get some hands-on visibility. So I think it was and also the word, sorry to interrupt you. I mm -hmm. see one question that uh, Kalpana says, like, uh, uh, 
she must be thought about uh, how to protect Alexa kind of smart home device as personal level. Yup, Neil. Actually, I'm just checking out that question only, and the best answer is just stop using that. That's the best thing you can do. Okay. I like yes, yes. like in my like okay, people are like uh, the mostly like uh, in India, like they are just using smart devices and like just look cool, and it's really a dumb device because you are just purchasing a uh, fast track watch or a band or like that, and it's easy to crack. Like it's not a big deal. Yeah, I've heard many people, they just turn the mic off on Alexa and they just turn it on when they really want to give command and use it. But still, you have to now go reach out the device. By the time you do that, you can better use the remote. So the purpose, whole purpose is, I think, uh, yeah, people do on and off, but it's not worth it. So sometimes what happens, uh, this Alexa and uh, this Google device, they heard what you are talking. And after that, they can like, you can see what topic you are searching or what the talk, according to that, they just give you a, any ads and that in your uh, device, like when you are access a computer. So that was very scary that yes, they yes. are having this uh, information. Yeah, I think you're very true, Neil, that uh, main purpose of this device is to automate uh, at least help you in simplifying your task but they end up i think uh, harvesting your data for uh, monetization purposes as well right totally agree on that yeah yeah well i think it was very nice presentation with me that you laid out the tools if somebody wants to really build a career into the iot security and iot white hacking i think uh, this is very helpful also, it's also helpful for any company who is uh, building solutions around IoT device. IFFT FTA and other protocols they are following, I think, uh, this is very good. So we will surely invite you for IoT-specific uh, workshop. Yeah, thank you, Vismay. Uh, thanks a lot. And I will definitely share my PPTs with you guys so you can share with all the Okay. So what we can do, we just share this uh, PPT to our audience who is uh, present today so they can take advantage of that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Everyone. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Take care. Yeah. Take care.